Hi, this is Keith Schneider, CEO of MarketGauge.com, and this is April 15th, 2012, edition of Market Outlook. So if you like our Market Outlook, please be sure to sign up so you get this on a weekly basis on our website, www.MarketGauge.com, or you can um, also follow us on YouTube. We have a channel over there. So we had a really, really interesting uh, last Friday, which was uh, a holiday week. And as you know, we got sandbagged by um, a really, really dismal jobs report. And it had its uh, pretty considerable impact on the market. But what's most interesting is that you've got a convergence of some very interesting short-term and longer-term trading patterns. And we're going to take a look at them this week. So the first thing, let's take a look at the Dow. Well, as you can see, the Dow is now trading for the first time in quite a while. Let's take a look at this. The Dow is now trading under the 50-day moving average, and it's done it for one, two, three, four, five consecutive days. So that is what I would call a downgrade from a bullish phase to a warning phase. Also, you can see that we have right around the 50-day moving average a inside day that was created on Friday. So what's interesting here is this confluence of a phase change, a test of that phase change at the 50-day moving average, and the inside day. So in addition, you had an inside day uh, three days ago. So you got some really interesting points here to play off of. You often, you often don't get this level of compression at a turning point. Sometimes it just plummets through before you really get a chance to set yourself up. So this is sort of uh, an interesting opportunity. A breakout above the highs of Thursday would take out the inside day, this compression area, and at the same time change market phase. Additionally, a breakdown below the low of Thursday and the inside day here is also a critical point, and you can see a possible cascade or waterfall down and another, uh, another significant leg down. So this is something really to keep uh, your eyes on. doesn't always set up as pretty as this, but um, some interesting opportunities are definitely uh, going to avail itself next week. Let's take a look at um, the spies. It's a little bit uh, a little bit different. The spies also looking at the uh, this is the S and P 500. The spies also tested and had a phase change with two days under, which it then promptly tried to pull its way out of. But again, the market on Friday failed, and so now you're sort of straddling this 50-day moving average with um, an, not quite an inside day, but just about. And the SPIs, I think it might be. Uh, no, not quite. On the close, the market just nudged a new low. But nonetheless, a move above the highs. You have these two, this, um, the high on Friday and the high on Thursday coincide, along with the 10-day moving average, which is this line right here. So again, we want to watch as the market moves out and away from these highs here or these lows here, which would also encompass this inside day. Overall, however, let's take a look at the bigger trends on a weekly chart. You can see on the weekly chart, uh, I had pointed out that there was some uh, reason for caution as you have this trend line and you've had a, what we call fanning action, but after we broke down in 2011, we actually now had the first test along with the market being a bit overbought on the relative strength index on a weekly basis. However, on a positive note, you can see the 65-week moving average contained the market very, very nicely on the sell-off this week, and we bounced from it. So, Again, a test of the lows and a move down through would get through this critical point, and you could have 
um, a cascade. On the other hand, you could be setting up for um, a nice move or bounce off of this and possibly a test, certainly of the uh, recent highs put in. So let's take a look at some of the market indicators and what they're telling us. The McClellan oscillator. This is the what I call, consider a intermediate term oscillator. Reached oversold levels um, on the big 200 point down day um, this week and promptly reversed two days later um, and we're on what we would call an intermediate term buy signal. Now with this short term pattern it wouldn't be unusual to see it make yet another test of the lows. Um, maybe this hooks back down. This hook here could certainly back hook back down and test the lows. But oftentimes, around um, these type of shifts in the marketplace, where the market is oversold on the, on the internals, especially this particular indicator, you can certainly get another test of the lows, maybe another penetration. But the market is definitely trying to come back, working off an oversold condition. So intermediate buy signal. On a shorter term basis, let's take a look at the advanced declines, 10-day advanced declines and up-down volume. Well, you can see advanced decline issues um, got overbought here. We sort of went sideways, made a marginal new high, and then got the sell-off. But more importantly, where are we right now? And you can see on the up-down uh, up volume here, that the um, the market has moved above the um, the buy line, where it's a little bit different on the advanced declines. So the breadth is lagging here. Um, and what we like to see on a shorter term basis is that both the advanced declines and the up down volume confirm, and that hasn't happened yet. So on a short term basis, as you can see, still under pressure because that advanced declines still showing some weakness has not moved through the lower um, end of this uh, range here where I would consider a buy signal being triggered after a substantial sell-off where in terms of volume some volume has been coming in and you can see it's definitely moved above this lower red bar so we've got half of a signal let's take a uh, you know careful look at this uh, during the week and see where we are. Okay, let's take a look at gold, also exhibiting some very, very interesting action. In gold, you can see we've been mentioning the test of this long-term trend, which has been intact. This is on a monthly chart. You can see the monthly trend. We bounced off of it, and we're trying to hold desperately right here this trend. So we've had some interesting action. It's moved a little bit, a little variance in and around this trend line. We basically closed on the long-term trend line. Now, interestingly enough, once the Fed um, basically um, had mentioned the uh, they weren't going to be uh, easing, no potential QE through, uh, QE3 uh, last week, the market promptly sold off and then reverse course when that jobs report came out and the market basically is looking for additional easing. Now another uh, couple points of interest here. You can see that the 200 weekly uh, moving average nicely holding in. This coincides with that long-term monthly chart as well. However, the signs of weakness and, the, and, and what we're seeing here on the daily chart is quite interesting. On Friday, we had um, a, a pretty nice sell-off here. Uh, we're trading under the 200-day moving average. We've been doing that for, gee, almost, uh, almost a month now. And the action definitely looks like it's rolling over. You can see the 50-day is looking to cross the 200. That would be a death cross. So you're seeing signs of some uh, rolling over in the gold market. A lot of people have been calling the top. I think it's a little bit premature. Let the market tell you. However, let's zoom in on that short-term pattern here. And you can see we had a couple of days up. Basically, 
with Friday's action. Um, we uh, traded down. Uh, he had a couple of rounds of uh, pretty severe selling. And again, we're basically we have this um, this 200-day. We, we really need to get above that. But it looks like the momentum here is definitely pulling it towards the downside. Um, so you've got the longer-term forces uh, being tested uh, on the, day, uh, the weekly and the monthly charts, but uh, the daily charts are definitely looking like they're rolling over. This rally here looks like it might have ran out of steam on Friday. Let's put in this trend line because this will be your guide. If we can break this trend line, I wouldn't be surprised to see a test and a potential shift in even the longer term view of the market. On the other hand, if we um, move again higher and get through this 200 day, we'll be in a lot better shape uh, for the gold market. But those are your pivotal points. All right, let's take a look at some of the key sectors. The uh, semiconductors, SMHs, also at a key pivotal point. You can see that we're trading right around the 50-day, the 10-day, and you've basically got an inside day. <clears throat> so if this market breaks on Monday to the downside and has the opening range breakout on the downside, you can say you're going to most likely get a confirmed phase change, and this leading uh, sector, important economic sector, um, will be... Um, starting another leg down to the downside as the market phase will be confirmed into a warning phase. On the other hand, we're sitting right here at that 10, 50, and the inside day. If we can pull out and make a move higher on, on Monday, move through this, and get at least two consecutive closes above that 50-day moving average, with the first one, of course, being a potential on Monday, that would be a really good sign that the market is stabilizing and going to move yet higher. And this was just a test uh, of the trend, a successful test of the overall trend. Let's also take a look at the, um, the bond market. And this one has been really tough. Um, as you know, I've been fairly positive on it. Um, it looked really interesting in terms of the whole potential uh, topping pattern here. I was a bit surprised to see the action quickly reverse. I'm going to put in this trend line, and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. I believe we had it in last week also. So you can see I really thought that the meat of this action here should have been met by resistance. We broke through the trend line broke through the 50-day moving average, basically on a gap straight through. So it caught most market participants, certainly by surprise. It certainly got me. And so right now you've got a um, what I would call a positive phase change with a breakaway gap. Let's see if it holds. This is a tough one to call. Again, you still have this overhead here, but the call has to go to the primary trend. So I would say um, certainly on the weekly charts, you can see we're now even trading above the 65 weekly. Um, we never even approached the uh, 200 weekly moving average, which these are the two key components that I look at for measuring the overall trend uh, on an intermediate term or weekly basis. And then finally, let's take a look at the VIX, because sentiment is definitely... Um, shifting with the market also. We had pointed out that um, we were sitting basically right before that report, right at that 50-day moving average and under the upper part of the Bollinger Band. Well, um, of course, with the massive sell-off uh, of 500-plus Dow points uh, over the last couple of days, the volatility certainly moved up. And we are now trading above the 50-day moving average for more than just two days. So I would say that overall on a short-term to intermediate-term basis, 
sentiment has definitely shifted unless we can move back under that 50-day moving average. So on a very short-term basis, we tested the upper end of the Bollinger Band, moved outside of it. Now we're back inside. So you got a bunch of different signals here that are also um, giving you a mixed reading because on an uh, intermediate-term basis, this 50-day moving average, now you've got several closes, certainly merits attention. So I would say the sentiment has definitely shifted to a little bit uh, to, to more caution. I would give that um, one for the bears. On the other hand, for the next uh, couple days, it's very possible that if we get the rally that this thing will move sideways here um, under the Bollinger Band, and that is often a very short-term signal, uh, buy signal. So mixed reading on VIX, but clearly sentiment is ref reflecting more nervousness. You stay above this 50-day moving average. That's more of an intermediate-term indicator, where this 200-day is much longer term. So there you have it in sentiment. So overall, you can see we're at some interesting inf inflection points, and the market being caught off guard after that jobs report has definitely uh, changed the tone of the market. And let's watch where the indices, the key indices, and how everything plays out because um, you don't get these setups too often. And I would be aggressive in trading off of those points because you will get uh, volatility and, and movement off of these points. They're powerful uh, setups. Whenever you get a confluence of multiple market patterns, that is very, very significant. So anyway, that concludes this week's market outlook. Hope you enjoyed us. Again, um, if you like what you've uh, heard here, sign up, get it weekly, and um, you can also follow us on YouTube. So bye for now. This is Keith Schneider, CEO, MarketGage.com.